Live from the Washington, D.C. area, it's the Inside Scoop, all the news that our viewers want to know. Now, here's the host. Welcome to Inside Scoop. I'm Kimberly Costabile, and tonight we're talking about Fairfax's 275th anniversary. I've got Gretchen Bulova here, who is the commemoration chair, and we have a deputy here from Fairfax County, and it's uh, Deputy Ferry. Fari, correct? <laughs> correct. Got it. So, uh, Lieutenant Fari, so how long uh, have you been with uh, the Fairfax County Sheriff's Department? I've been with the Sheriff's Office for 11 years now. 11 years? Yes, I absolutely love it. Wow. And, and now you were saying that the Sheriff's Office was into this celebration way before everybody else. So tell me a little bit about that. <laughs> well, this is our 275th anniversary of mm -hmm. our agency. Mm -hmm. um, we are one of the oldest on this coast. So it was kind of a, a natural thing for us to want to celebrate. We celebrated back for our 250th anniversary. So of course, when this milestone rolled around, we definitely had to get involved. Oh, that's neat. And then there's even a commemoration badge. Yes, um, I'm wearing the 275th commemoration badge that was available for um, our deputies to, to purchase and wear. So we all wear them very proudly. We're wow. very excited about them. That's great. Beautiful stuff, too. So there, a lot of detail went into that design from what I hear. And um, Gretchen, now how did y you get roped into all this? So I, I know that you you have an extensive history background with the city of Alexandria and so um, and so how did you I, did you get recruited into this or how did your interest in in this come about right um, so by day I actually work for the office of historic Alexandria mm -hmm. so I do history for a living and I also have um, been honored to have served on the Fairfax County History Commission. Mm -hmm. And so I was uh, on the immediate past chair, mm -hmm. and I also helped to run the sesquicentennial of the Civil War for the Fairfax County History Commission. So all that being said, um, I have volunteered a lot in a history capacity for Fairfax County as well. And basically the idea for the commemoration came about about two and a half years ago. We were, as members of the History Commission, thinking how can we get more visibility for all of the many history organizations mm -hmm. in the county? And we were trying, we we're trying to think, um, do we have a trade show? Do we just, uh, do we have a, like a symposium and feature different people? And it was actually Suzanne Levy, who's on our committee now, who uh, is retired from the Virginia Room. She was the, the lead librarian for many years. Um, she sat there with a calculator and figured out, well, if we do the commemoration in 2017, it'll actually be the 275th anniversary and wouldn't that be fun to actually um, do a commemoration and focus on Fairfax County history. So it, it was kind of the snowballing effect from just having um, a, a trade show of museums and history organization to a year-long commemoration where our signature event is a history fair which is coming up on June 17, uh -huh. that features more than 75 different history organizations. And we're, we've been so pleased and honored to have uh, worked with the Fairfax County Sheriff's Office. They have been partners through this whole thing. Um, Fairfax great. County Sheriff's Department was actually founded with the county. Yes, in yeah. 1742. Right. So, so rolling. Yes. And, and we're going to talk a little bit more in detail about that. I think I've got a map of, of the, the grounds of the, the how of the, the fair of the fair and mm -hmm. all the, the three bands and all that. So that'll come up in a little bit. But I think do we have uh, a video about uh, we, we did a special we did a special gift for you.
So that was a video card from the kids from the American History Film Project, and we'll be seeing some of them a little bit later today. But that what did you think really, of that? That was wonderful. That was beautiful. Yeah, they did a great job. Yeah. Isn't it wild? And, and you could see Reston and Kingstown and all the, the as, as each community mm -hmm. started. My so. community in Burke. Yep. Oh, yeah, Very you exciting. saw the Burke. Yeah. There you go. So yeah, and, and that, that there was once going to be a, an airport in, in Burke. So right. yeah, so anyway. And so now when you do your deputy outreach, what 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 do you do? Where do you run out to? Well, sure. Well, the 275th anniversary really brought um, on an opportunity for us as an agency to get um, to get out in the community and really reach our, our residents. And um, the sheriff really wanted to put together something special, so we started the Give Back, um, Pay It Forward, Give Back initiative. And what we've been doing is giving the opportunity for deputies to go out into the community and volunteer. And um, we've we've partnered up with numerous groups such as the Green Acre Senior Center to do senior bingo. We've been doing story time with the deputy the first Wednesday of every month at the Fairfax City Regional Library. I'm actually going to be reading on Wednesday, so we would love for everyone to come out. Right. And mm -hmm. it's just it's just opened up opportunities to, to meet new people and to let them know that the sheriff's office we're not just running the jail or the courts, but we, we're here to, to help and be a part of our community. So as special project supervisor, you're really into all of these oh, yes. special projects. <laughs> and when they say special, it, it is. And we are out in the community, and mm -hmm. it's really important for them to know who we are and what we're all about, and especially mm -hmm. on such a commemorative year. Neat. So all the areas you saw on the video, you've, you've been around. You've been yes. to Yes, yes. Um, yeah. All 406 square miles. <laughs> so amazing. That's our sheriff's office. And which library are you reading in? The this? Fairfax City Regional Library. City Regional. It starts Great. at 10 o'clock. So. Yeah. Good, good. We're very excited. Yeah, and what's the most um, unusual outreach you've done, either in relationship to this event coming up or another? Sure. Um, well, this past fall, we worked with our Northern Virginia Therapeutic Writing Program, mm. and um, it's children that go out from um, schools and, and homes and uh, shelters and things like that, and they work with the horses to build. Um, sort of a, a bond with them and learn about trust and to learn about self-esteem. And so on the last day of their class, the deputies come out and they get to teach us. So that was a really <laughs> neat experience that we, we got to go to. Uh, so Yeah, no, and, and therapy writing means so much. I've seen kids really benefit from that. Absolutely. So, that's, so that's great. whether it be, you know, a food drive, mm -hmm. you know, collecting things for the shelter house or working with therapeutic courses. Um, our sheriff's office is out there calling bingo. So it's just <laughs> it's just all about making that connection and it's about people and partnerships. And that's what's really kept us going for 275. Mm -hmm. So great. And and I think we might have a, a map of the, the grounds of the 275. I'm not sure if they can pull that up, but there's a lot planned. So they have, and we're going to talk about it a little bit more in our next segment as well, because we've got about two Two more minutes or one more minute to go until we take a quick break but um, so so in terms of your outreach what have you done to let folks um, get ready for this and, and recruit volunteers or you've been talking to everyone so sure. Uh, we have been all over the county making presentations. I, bet I um, saw a few. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and we basically um, uh, are working through history organizations, um, mm -hmm. trying to reach their different constituencies. And uh, 400, how many square miles? 406. It's a <laughs> big yeah. county. And there's Exhausting. lots of really interesting organizations. Um, and a lot of organizations have stepped up to create create their own 275th events. Mm -hmm. For example, the cardboard boat regatta, regatta yes. that's part of Springfield Days, yes. was, yes. was uh, this past weekend. And the most spectacular boats were created. And actually, the Fairfax County SAC program, um, a number of the schools created them as part of the after school program and competed them that day. And they were just fantastic. Mm -hmm. um, large George Washington's. There was um, even a sheriff's office boat. <laughs> yeah. So we were pretty proud. Yeah. And they had a a logo t-shirt made for the 275th. So we've seen a lot of interest from um, places that we actually didn't make presentations to. So that's been really rewarding for us. So oh yeah, a lot of about that. a lot of enthusiasm throughout the county. 
Oh, yeah. It's fun to see the kids. And so later in this show tonight, you'll see what the other mm -hmm. kids put together. And uh, you can also see more at the American History Film Project.org. However, you have a hashtag. It's um, hashtag Fairfax. Fair, hashtag Fairfax 275. 275. That's right. Yes. And then and your website is? Fairfax275.org. Okay, yes. yeah. great. And then and then the sheriff's has a, a link to it as sure, well. Sure, and, so. and you can access that from our sheriff's office website and Facebook page as well. Good. Well, we're going to hear a little bit more about what's going on in Fairfax and what's going on in Alexandria. So, uh, Gretchen, you stay with me. We are very excited to have a large history celebration to commemorate the founding of Fairfax County 275 years ago. And to make it even more special, we're having it on the grounds of the historic Fairfax Courthouse. And the courthouse is what you can see behind me, is uh, where the, the county's courthouse in 1800 began, and it is still the grounds of our courthouse today. The event begins at 10 o'clock and will run through 4 o'clock on June 17th, and it is going to feature a host of family-friendly and history-themed events. We have an entire children's area dedicated to teaching kids about history and what it was like to go to school in Fairfax County um, many years ago. In that area, we will also have children's games and hands-on crafts that they can participate in. We're lucky enough to have such great museums here in Fairfax County that we have a Gunston Hall, Sully Plantation, uh, Colvin Run Mill, as well as Mount Vernon, all having large tables to showcase their history and have activities for families as well. We have four performance areas that day, and one of the performance areas will actually be inside the historic courthouse. And you'll actually have an opportunity to listen to Lady Washington talk about her life and what it's like here in rural Fairfax County. Uh, you'll also be able to visit with George Mason and his brother. And as a highlight to the whole day, the actual Lord Fairfax, the current Lord Fairfax, the 14th uh, Lord Fairfax of Cameron, will be here and he will actually speak twice. And so you can listen to him in the historic courthouse talk about what it's like to be Lord Fairfax and the politics of Great Britain today. We're back to the Inside Scoop. Here again, your host. Welcome back to Inside Scoop. And I'm here, uh, Kimberly Castamil, and I'm here with Gretchen Bulova. And we also have Michelle Longo, who is the curator of education at Gatsby's Tavern. And we're talking history today. It's, it's Fairfax's 275th anniversary. And also, we just had the American History Film Project exhibition mm -hmm. in which uh, Michelle referred someone over to me, who's one of our, our featured films about Gatsby's Tavern in Alexandria. Mm -hmm. So, but first I'll ask Gretchen, uh, Fairfax and Alexandria sh have a shared history in the beginning, in the origin, so if you could explain that and, that's, and how that came about. Um, I'll try to keep this as succinct as possible because yes. it is pretty Along. complicated. <laughs> but, but actually, the founding of Fairfax County in 1742, Fairfax County is made up of Prince William, the northern portion of Prince William County. Mm -hmm. And as the part of today's city of Alexandria was actually Fairfax County back then. Mm -hmm. And uh, Fairfax County um, is can claim roots in what is today the city of Alexandria, Arlington, Prince William, and Loudoun. And so it was kind of carved out over time. Yeah. But the, 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 the real, the fun connection, I think, um, you know, personally working in Alexandria mm -hmm. is that the courthouse for um, Fairfax County was, you know, the market um, in Alexandria today. So when you go to Old Town Alexandria, the fountains on King Street with the longest running farmers market, that's the the market and, and courthouse. And we have the original weights and measures from the time where Fairfax County's courthouse was there in Alexandria. Those still exist. Uh -huh. And those are actually on view today at the Fairfax County Government Center. Uh -huh. So those have been preserved. So the courthouse for Fairfax County started in the Tysons area. Okay. And then it was moved to Alexandria. And when Alexandria became part of Washington, D.C., 
Fairfax had to build a new courthouse, so they moved it over to what we consider the city of Fairfax today. Um, they moved that for 1800, and that has been the location for the courthouse ever since. And the courthouse complex, while we think of it as Fairfax City, that complex itself uh -huh. is actually Fairfax County. So there's a new courthouse today that was built several years ago, and that historic um, courthouse is still there. And they actually use it Fridays, um, I think once a month, they actually still um, use it as a courtroom, which is, which is really fun. Hmm. That is fun. Yeah, and I forgot to ask the deputy, there's going to be a new museum um, at the location of the jail, I guess. Right, and they actually have started that as part of the 275th commemoration. They've taken mm -hmm. the, one of the original jails and um, preserved it, and they're installing a museum, and they are working on a very aggressive timeline because they're having it open for tours mm -hmm. on June 17th. Wow. So I haven't seen it. They're working diligently. So I look forward to, to experiencing it that day. I bet, I bet. And the, yeah, there's so much to see. So I hope mm -hmm. you guys, we can definitely do installments almost every week. <laughs> I'm only a rotating host, so you only get history <laughs> once a month, every other month. But, but every time I come back, I promise to, to, to talk a little bit more about Fairfax and Alexandria. Well, we can't talk enough about history. We right. This is so important. Yeah, and the, and the bad parts of history can repeat itself, so mm -hmm. it's important. History, we mm -hmm. need to learn from it. Which uh, reminds me, so relating to the courthouse, so when it comes to Mosby and all these raids and all these things that happen, so that was at the Fairfax courthouse. But I'm still a little confused about it. That was at the point that... So there was Alexandria, and then you said Alexandria moved on over to Fairfax. But in 1800, in the 1800s. so Mosby is many years later. Yeah, but. and it was many years later, so then that raid occurred. Mm -hmm. And then, and so now when you do research, when I was a reporter, I'd go to the Virginia room and do research. Mm -hmm. So where you find the Fairfax records, would that be in Alexandria or would that be in Fairfax? Um, both, actually. Okay. So if you're going to do comprehensive research, you want to look mm -hmm. at a couple of places. So, okay. Um, so in Alexandria, you can look at through the court records. You mm -hmm. also, we have our version of the Virginia Room in Alexandria. It's the uh, Special Collections Library at the uh, Kate Waller Barrett branch on, on Queen Street. Okay. And they have an amazing resource there. Uh -huh. But you would also want to check out, like you said, the Virginia Room. Mm -hmm. But then um, the historic courthouse, they have the, the archival materials there. So the earliest ledgers and documents Mm -hmm. from Fairfax County are actually housed there. So a lot of times when we do research for Gadsby's Tavern, mm -hmm. uh -huh. um, we actually need to go back to the Fairfax Courthouse um, to look at some of the original deeds and yes. um, the price of goods yes. and, and things like that. It's all in the court yeah. records. And George Washington's will is in the Fairfax mm -hmm. Courthouse. So yep. it's, just, it's just all over the place, <laughs> yeah. Mount Vernon. And, and, so, and then exactly, so I was researching Annandale history, so looking at Annandale, I had to look obviously also both at Alexandria and Fairfax. So well, and, uh, you know, there's a lot of great resources in the individual little museums and historical groups throughout um, Fairfax County as well. So, mm -hmm. so many of them have their own archival facility. So um, mm -hmm. uh, the Fairfax Railroad Museum would have something uh, in, in Vienna yeah. at the, the Freeman store has materials. So mm -hmm. um, research is a, is a process and it's exciting. And one uh, little find at one site kind of leads you to other places along the way. So it's, it's, yeah. It's like being a detective. That's exactly. part of the excitement of history is we're always learning new things. Yeah. And it's 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 not boring and static. I mean, we're always learning more about the past. And in this mm -hmm. day and age where so many um, items are being digitized, more and more is coming online every day. So right. um, make sure you check online repositories, starting mm -hmm. with the Library of Congress and mm -hmm. the National Archives. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and that reminds me, I, I know I'm skipping around because in the next segment we're going to talk a little bit more about what you got insp you inspired in history. But uh, you were saying uh, your first job, you've always loved history, and your first job was? Yeah, um, so uh, 
my first job in high school, this was an internship through the, the federal government. Um, my first job was working at cataloging objects for the Armed Forces Institute of Pathology at Walter Reed. Hmm. And so I was collecting bones that were brought back from Custer's Last Stand. Mm -hmm. so, so when you talk about digitizing, yeah. I'm thinking, are they now going to digitize the bones and, mm -hmm. and put Well, and one of the reasons I was actually selected for that job is because, I mean, this was this was in the 80s and mm -hmm. uh, computers were new mm -hmm. and as a, as a young person, and I was very interested in computers and mm -hmm. I actually set up a collections database for them and, and made it accessible, so. Cool, cool. And now we have um, a little something. So one of the students from the American History Film Project prepared something about Gatsby's Tavern. Oh. I know you've got a history with that, so we thought well, we would show that for you. So I'll okay. go ahead and let them show that. Gatsby's Tavern is at the heart of historic Old Town Alexandria. Today, the tavern acts as both a restaurant and a museum that accurately depicts what life was like for the average Alexandrian in the colonial era. The museum hosts many costume balls, fundraisers, and participates in several Girl Scout activities to teach the future generation about their city's past. In the pre- and post-revolutionary period, it was an active hub for soldiers, politicians, and some of America's founding fathers, like George Washington and Thomas Jefferson. However, after its period of prosperity, the tavern fell down on its luck and was on the road to demolition until the 1930s when the American Legion Post 24 bought it and hoped to renovate the building as a museum to commemorate World War I veterans. The tavern's uses varied over the years and especially fell into disarray during the reconstruction period after the Civil War. But there's, the town itself was in a really bad state of disrepair, I understand. It was, uh, was pretty neglected. A lot of the buildings were, were uh, not being utilized. It was not until Rebecca Ramsey Reese took over the project in 1931 did any work on the museum actually start. Rebecca Ramsey Reese was a married mother of two who served as an active participant of the Daughters of the Revolution in the Alexandria chapter and other local societies like the Garden Club. At the time, Mount Vernon had just been refurbished and there was a rush to save other historic sites in the area. The George Washington Parkway had just been created uh, for the bicentennial of George Washington's birth mm -hmm. and the citizens of Alexandria thought it would be a huge economic boom to their town. So mm -hmm. anything associated with George Washington was going to be a big deal. Great, so uh, so that was a special gift actually from Michelle. She brought that film mm -hmm. to me. It's my pleasure. So, yeah, so what did you think? Now it's not done yet. You have to go to the American History <laughs> yes. Film Project.org to see the whole thing. And hopefully we'll also be showing it at the festival. So That would so, be great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so you're saying the cool thing is that the festival brought all these people together from all these different divisions. All these different organizations. Mm -hmm. And we're very used to working with all the organizations in Alexandria. Um, so it's been fun to connect with uh, organizations that I had really very little contact with, um, mm -hmm. the Reston uh, mm -hmm. Museum, and there's a lot of um, uh, schoolhouses that have been preserved throughout the county. So we have more than 75 different organizations coming to the fair, including uh, Historic Alexandria mm -hmm. and Gadsby's Tavern. Yeah, yeah, and, and, and I'll be talking with Michelle a little bit more in the next segment, but Michelle, so why is it that you selected that film out of the, for the National History Day a while back? Uh, well, Marta is one of our volunteers actually at the museum, so we were thrilled that she chose to focus her project on a topic that's so near and dear to our hearts and see that she's been with us since 2009 and kind of grown up with us. Mm -hmm. So to see her love of history grow and her attachment to the local history because she's an Alexandrian, um, that was just such a pleasure to know that we're part of that story now and her taking it off and making it part of yeah. her future work now too. 
So in the next segment, we will have Marta come in oh, with great. Michelle, and we're going to talk a little bit more about what inspires them. But we've got about one more minute left, so tell me a little bit about your childhood and what made you love history as a child. Um, you know, it's funny, when I applied to graduate school in museums, um, they ask you on your essay what inspired you to be to want to be a museum person. And mm -hmm. I have to say that I have wanted, since I was a little kid, to run a museum. And I grew up um, as a young person in Massachusetts, and then we moved to Virginia uh, when I was 12, so to have had two states so steeped in history, I think you can't help but want to be in the history or museum profession. Good. Good. Well, well, we hope to hear more from you after the event. And great. I will be there. We'll have a booth there and just record. It's going to be a great day. It's Let's hope exciting. for good weather it's and June 17th, a great crowd. From 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. 10 to 4 on the grounds of the historic courthouse in Fairfax City. the smoke before you give it a try only you don't play with matches don't play with fire Wash your car at home. When I wash my car, everything runs down the street and down into the storm drains. With all the chemicals and the soaps and waxes, the last thing I want to do is poison my own drinking water. At least here, it's all contained and recycled on site. That's why I also take my car in for oil changes instead of doing it myself. I might take a chance on spilling stuff. You know what the best part is? What? More time to kick back and watch the game. How far would you go? to protect the planet. I want you to build an ark. Here we go. OK, that's good. Oh, OK. Ow. Oh. 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 Maybe there's another way. People, the flood is imminent. Is it too much to ask for a little precipitation? Go to fightglobalwarming.com to find out what you and your community can do to reduce global warming pollution. Somewhere around the world, there are men and women of the armed forces risking their lives, helping rebuild communities after natural disasters, collecting toys for needy children, tutoring kids in school. These are your sons and daughters who work to keep us safe, secure, and free. Dedicated men and women who put their country first. We're back to the Inside Scoop. Here again, your host. We're back at Inside Scoop. This is uh, Kimberly Coswell, and I am with Marta and Michelle Longo. Mm -hmm. Now, Marta is, uh, has been recommended by Michelle. Uh, she, you were recommended for the National History Day contest, yes. as well as referred over to the American History Film Project. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so, Michelle, tell me a little bit more about what impressed you about Marta's film. Well, I, I already mentioned the opportunity to see the local history and through her eyes. I also was really excited to see how she pulled in her experience because she's been teaching at the overnights that she mentioned. And that's actually where she first was introduced to the story of Rebecca Ramsey Reese. Mm -hmm. So that, that video is actually a tiny clip of what she knows and how she's seen the impact of Rebecca Ramsey Reese both in her life and in all these fourth and fifth grade girls she still gets to teach. Yeah. Wow, so, and then so you've been teaching the Girl Scouts since how long? Or? Well, I've been with Gadsby's Tavern um, since about third grade. Um, however, I just really started working with the Girl Scouts, maybe third year, I think. I, you've been yeah. doing it at least three years. Yes, yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. And it's a wonderful experience. I love working with the girls since I was a Girl Scout too when I was younger, so it's great. Yeah, that's neat. And this is, and you've done films before. Or is this your first film? Um, this is my first really big film. I usually do stuff with photography, but never with actual moving picture. Yeah. It was a nice combination of slides, and and uh, we got, we we're we're excited because it's a real documentary, and it's it's just that combination of a live interview and 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 mm -hmm. preserving history by interviewing someone. Mm -hmm. and she really then, took and advantage then, yeah, of the people we had that you could interview the the 
dose sense the volunteers mm -hmm. that portray her in research and the yeah. staff. It was great. Yeah, and you had told me on the phone you have, uh, it's a special program. It is the... Uh, oh, for the children or for the... The, the docents, but it's, mm -hmm. it's the, the like living history talking. So we do, we have um, living history volunteers, adults mm -hmm. that research the period and create characters or portray specific people from the past. Mm -hmm. And most of them are in the 18th century, but we do have a few that do 20th century, mm -hmm. like Alari Kittle that yeah. um, you see in the video. And then we have volunteers like our junior docents, and that's the program that Marta came through, yes. where fourth through sixth grade students audition and then are trained to give tours and improve mm -hmm. their public presentation skills. Mm -hmm. and hopefully they stay with us like Marta all the way through high school so we get to really see them grow and um, spread their wings. It's mm -hmm. amazing. Yeah. yeah. Michelle had, had told me that she was going to bring a photo of you from fourth grade. Uh, no. She said, no. <laughs> I'm not going to embarrass her. <laughs> but, but no, no. So, my parents <laughs> definitely have a lot of pictures of me in my little blue colonial dress. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that's so cute. That's so cute. And so, because yeah. so, you're a junior at St. Stephen's and St. Agnes. Yes. And so, and so she's saying, no, a junior in high school, doesn't that, they do not want to have. No. <laughs> I might have looked a little cuter then, but oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, you look great, you look great. In fact, a little bit later, we're going to have some film of you on the red carpet, or how you looked at the, um, the American History Film Festival. Mm -hmm. But I wanted to save that for the fourth segment, so I'm not sure with, with our um, production situation. Mm -hmm. you know, but it was, what did you think about presenting your film in front of a large audience this past weekend? Um, well, it wasn't that many people that have seen it. I mean, Michelle's seen it, uh, my history teacher, and my parents many, many times have seen the film. And um, I love sharing my work, but again, it was my first time making a documentary, so I wasn't sure with, ooh, I think it's okay, but what will other people think? And that was definitely, it was an eye-opening experience, but it was also very gratifying hearing other parents and kids coming up and saying, wow, I liked your work, and that just felt really good because I love doing it and I put in a lot of work. Uh -huh. Yeah. And, and Gretchen had mentioned that she was also a competitor in National History Day when yeah. she was a kid. Mm -hmm. So, and we forgot to bring that up in the last segment. But, um, and so, and so Michelle, you, how did you get involved with National History Day? Because you actually, you're the regional coordinator. I am. I'm the regional coordinator for mm -hmm. National History Day. It's a really large region that um, extends all the way south to Fredericksburg and we're actually the largest competition in the state of Virginia. So Marta was up against a lot of really tough yes. competition <laughs> at even the local level, no less um, for those who make it to the state and the national level. And it came to us, we're actually the lead as part of a team of museums that now um, manage the coordination. So the Manassas Museum System, Mount Vernon, um, the Fairfax County Public Schools, it's a lot of different uh, communities that are coming together to support the program because it's so important to give the students a chance to not just create the work, but History Day also gives them a chance to show it and get feedback because we have judges from the field review their work and give a constructive criticism so they can continue to grow in their practice. Amazing, good stuff. And, and so from my research, I found out that National History Day has, the, the documentary film is only one category yes. of National mm -hmm. History Day. And so you have to judge how many other categories and what, what's the process? How do you choose? Well, there's five different categories and it's mm -hmm. up to the student to, in most cases, select which category. So we mm -hmm. always recommend selecting your topic first mm -hmm. and the topic always has to relate to the year's theme and that's released by the national office. And then after you begin your research, then you can decide which of the five formats. So there's papers, performances, websites, documentaries, and exhibits, like the traditional trifold panel. And depending on what sources you have, um, one format might be better than another. So because she could do interviews, that was great for a documentary, and she would have lost that with an exhibit. But mm -hmm. if you don't have as many visual sources, uh, then maybe picking a performance is a better fit to show off everything that you've learned. And it's not just about learning the facts, it's about analyzing and put it, putting it into context as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so that, that makes it tough, you know, mm -hmm. when you have to judge and, and, and do, you, do you send back, send things back for revision or 
they just hit one shot deal for our level it's a one shot to be able to move on but those mm -hmm. that move on use the judging comments to make revisions so that's the idea is as you move on to every level you're supposed to take the judges who comments under advisement and make, hopefully make adjustments so you're even better when you get to the next level. And a lot of students come back and compete every year because mm -hmm. this is your second year? Your second year, mm -hmm. second year. Oh, we have great. some who've been doing it since sixth grade since mm -hmm. that's as young as you can start. Yeah. And so even if they aren't going to the next level, they're taking the feedback and mm -hmm. using it for the next year to get better and maybe make it onto the state and national competition. So what did you do last year? I wrote a paper mm -hmm. about European colonialism in uh, Nigeria and the Congo. Ah, <laughs> very different topic. Yes. It was very dark. Um, there were lots of big books that we had to read, uh, specifically about um, King Leopold II in um, Belgium. And I decided mm -hmm. since it was, it was a more formal topic, I believed. And we were studying it in school, so that's why I wrote the paper but I felt I needed to do something more creative this year. I just, it was too dark of a topic for me, <laughs> honestly. And I, again, I know so much about Rebecca Ramsey Reese that I just felt like I had to do something creative and something local. Yeah, mm -hmm. and Rebecca Ramsey Reese, I, I, she inspired many people, so many generations mm -hmm. of people. So yeah. that was just an excellent choice. And continues there. to do so. Yes, yes definitely. definitely. Yeah, so. And, um, and so back about the National History Day, the, uh, so this year you also had someone that did something on the Berlin Wall. Mm -hmm. And so how did that work? That, so then that person went on to national he competition? He made it through the state competition okay. and he'll be presenting this coming weekend at the national competition in College Park. Mm -hmm. And he's been participating since yeah. middle school and is Champion, championing the program at T.C. Williams, oh, so keeping good. it alive. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. Does he volunteer with you? Do you know him? Or I yeah. personally don't, but I have many friends at T.C. So we. Friends mm -hmm. and friends. And you start to see familiar faces when you yeah, go back to the competition every year. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of fun that way. It yeah, is. Yeah, it's, it's a community, honestly. Mm -hmm. yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. So, and, and, so, and it, what's nice is the American History Film Project is different because it, it's just narrowed to American history. Yeah. And so that's why we couldn't feature the Berlin right. Wall there, but we loved having yours because yeah. it's Alexandria. Yeah. So, so, um, and so yours will definitely be archived on the website, on the American mm -hmm. History Film Project.org website. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And that's where you'll be able to see your film in perpetuity. Oh, good. <laughs> right, right. Yes. So, um, and but people can learn from it, and they'll know more about Rebecca. Yeah. So, and and then your thing. So, what's nice about this? Are you mm -hmm. going to to go to the the national just observe, or, or probably not this year? Um, I'm actually taking a standardized test. Also. Oh, <laughs> but I wish I could. I really want. Busy, to. busy. I did see his film when I was. Um, competing at local level, I did watch it and it was amazing. But mm -hmm. um, I wish I could, I want to. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and so your process is, and he's young, so he'll be back next year. He still has at yeah. least one more year mm -hmm. to compete. Yeah, mm -hmm. so we'll be encouraging you both to come back and focus on, on local history mm -hmm. so that we can, we can feature you in both. Mm -hmm. And then, and uh, so that's really cool. Although your first paper was very intellectual, <laughs> it was important. There's a lot going on, definitely. Yeah, yeah. And maybe we'll see you June 17th at the fair. So now mm -hmm. you're going to stay with us into the next segment. Okay. And and then and then and so then I'll uh, have to chat with you later this week by phone. Of course. But there's a lot to chat about. Mm -hmm. And uh, so you'll be looking at um, when you're judging. You'll, you'll be looking, when does your, your so the, cycle start all over again now? We get the schools ready in the fall and the competition at the local level, our, our regional level, is going to be in March. It's always the first Saturday of March with projects turned in two weeks before in the um, website and the paper category because those are reviewed mm -hmm. in advance. So they, they don't actually have quite as long to work on it. And a lot of the schools host contests because schools can submit up to three entries mm -hmm. in a category. 
and some schools it's 300 kids competing 300 kids, just yeah. to get to our competition it's just it's, to get to the regional yeah. just to get to the regionals and then the state Virginia competitions are where uh, in Richmond in the Virginia Richmond. Historical okay. Society is the state sponsor uh-huh. and, and, and I've heard that's it's usually awesome. April or, and that is yeah. usually in April mid-April yeah. depending on when the spring breaks fall for schools yeah mm -hmm. and then American History Film Projects in June so yeah. you're just running around so we'll see you June 17th mm -hmm. and then hopefully I'll see you June 17th mm -hmm. too and then you're doing Girl Scout things in between so what's going on for this summer well we'll be gearing up mostly for the fall mm -hmm. the Girl Scouts take the break in the uh -huh. in the summer but mm -hmm. we'll be back on next year yes. with overnight featuring Rebecca Ramsey Reese's mm -hmm. story they yeah. learn how to be community change agents based mm -hmm. on um, what Mrs. Reese did in Alexandria as a model. So it's overnight at Gatsby's Tavern. That's right. Yes. And, and, uh, and yeah. then we learn about media at the Apothecary Museum, mm -hmm. and the girls make their own public service announcements. Yeah, that's great. And, uh, We'll see them for teas, learning about water and how to use it historically and conserve mm -hmm. it today. Mm -hmm. And uh, anything else the girls want to do with us. We love having them. Yeah. So. Yeah. And so, Michelle, we've got mm, less than a minute. Okay. But I just wanted to, so what got you first interested in history as a kid? Um, well, dinosaurs would be the short answer. <laughs> <laughs> I love dinosaurs and paleontology, but it's really hot to do that. Yes. <laughs> so I like being inside. But I really love stories. And to me, history is about storytelling and bringing people together. Great. Well, we'll be right back. So Marta's going to stay. We're going to hear from Mary Hilbrink. And thank Michelle, you. Good. thank you so much for being with us. My pleasure. Thank you. Take a look under your bed. Find stuff under there? What about jobs? No? Now try your closet. Still no jobs? Just more stuff? Well, you really have both. See, stuff is defined as household articles considered as a group. Sometimes this stuff is no longer needed. Wait, no longer needed? That can't be right. Because remember those jobs you were looking for? Those are really needed. And they're the stuff inside your stuff. Our job is to unlock those jobs. And it starts when you donate your stuff to your local Goodwill. Here's how we do it. When you donate to Goodwill, we sell your stuff to provide job training for people right here in your community. So just by teaming up with Goodwill, you help create jobs. And isn't that worth parting with the leftover guitar from your 80s cover band? Goodwill. Donate stuff, create jobs. We, we just, just finished, finished dinner, dinner and it was, was time, time for homework. homework. He I hates hate homework. homework. I know he's bright. Why is it so hard for me? He's I'm just trying as try hard as I harder. can. One in five children struggle with learning and attention issues. Go from misunderstanding to understood.org. It's me, Artie. Come see what I collected from the Creative Galaxy in my idea box. Transform your world. Will you help me make art? Each one of our journeys keeps us Before you throw it away. Hey, I have an idea. Think outside the box. Go be amazing! Give your cardboard box another life. Recycle. Most party fouls, not a big deal. But if you decide to drink and drive underage, you could lose your license and your freedom. Underage drinking and driving, the ultimate party foul. We're back to the Inside Scoop. Here again, your host. Welcome back to Inside Scoop. We're here with Marta, who uh, was recently featured at the American History Film Festival mm -hmm. this past weekend for the American History Film Project. Mm -hmm. And we also have Mary Hilbrink, who visited from Illinois, representing us at the American History Film Project. Mary did a film uh, on Cary, Illinois. And, yes. so, uh, and so it's been fun. So now this is the first year that the American History Film Project was at the Angelica mm -hmm. Film Center. And so what was that like for you guys? You're on the red carpet. Well, um, I had never been to the theater personally, but I was talking to a lot of friends, and they said that they loved the theater itself. And um, it was really cool seeing some of my work on a big screen. It was really awesome. And I thought it was a great venue. It was a lot of fun. Well, I that's true. 
Yeah, I really liked how having it on the big screen and having this whole red carpet for everyone to, to be on and take pictures yeah. on, it really made everyone feel like they were special and part mm -hmm. of something bigger. And that was just really neat because, I mean, some kids don't have that opportunity, and it was really nice to see that. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. That's cool. And, and so, and now, Mary, you've been featured in different uh, news articles in Chicago uh, mm -hmm. when, this, when your film first hit a year or so ago. And also, you've, you've sung at state fairs. So, uh, how would you compare? I mean, all, all audiences are different. How did it feel to see the film audience react to your film? Well, the differences between films and singing at uh, a state fair is that with films, it's more like, uh, they're more quiet, definitely, <laughs> and they, uh, they're more, you know, calm and subdued. And then at state fairs, sometimes they're like, woo, woo, and like, go girl and stuff. Yeah. And I'm like, sometimes I get distracted and stuff. And also, I'm not performing live in like a video. So uh, when I'm performing live, sometimes that's distracting. And uh, just seeing the video, it was nice to just see something that I did that I didn't have to do live, like, you know. Okay. So, yeah. It's a nice to re relax and see, you know, Definitely. reactions. Mm -hmm. Definitely. So, Good change. And sometimes there are, your video had to do with the history of Cary, Illinois, but it had to do a little bit about the Baby Ruth factory and different things like that. So, so you had a little bit of comedy in there, and you had a little bit of history. And, and so what we would call it at the American History Film Project is we would call that a docudrama. So it's not docu -drama. a straight drama or, or a docu-comedy, I'm not sure. <laughs> but, it's, but it was fun, and you, you involved music in that as well. And so Marta's was straight you know, documentary yes. and, and scholarly <laughs> and all the scholarly sources cited. But it was still entertaining because I think you ask really good questions about Rebecca Ramsey Race. So, 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 um, so it, so your works were very different uh -huh. and yet both entertaining. Thank and you. so Thank you. we yeah. tried to, to weave it in. And, and, uh, so, um, what did you think when you saw all the other films, how would you compare the films? And, and in terms of, you know, the other ones compared to yours, did you have any favorites? Um, I would definitely say uh, the, uh, the one from Nebraska about um, a Crazy Horse, where they actually were jumping on horses and they were running around, and that was just so real, and it was really cool how they did that, and as someone who yeah. loves and rides horses, and they were just getting on, and they yeah, were like, it was, so cool. it was Awesome. That was great. <laughs> I like that one. Yeah. So it was, yeah, and they, they, they threw in the modern, uh, you know, music at a certain yeah. point. So mm -hmm. I, I don't know. It was just like guitar riffs and, mm -hmm. and kind of a little bit of heavy metal as, yeah. as uh, Chief Crazy Horse is getting killed mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so by the cavalry guy. Yeah. But but it was good. And a little mm -hmm. bit of you know chasing through the forest. And so you like the action part of it, maybe. Definitely. And the fact. Um, some of the other films, the kids were so young, mm -hmm. but they were so dedicated and. Um, that's what I respected. I just, they memorized their lines, they didn't, you know, laugh in front of the camera. I know a lot of little kids will just kind of goof off. They were serious about what they were doing, and you could tell they were passionate about what they were doing, and that was awesome to see. Yeah, the Arizona film was well practiced. Mm -hmm. It was uh, about gold miners. Yeah, that and, was and it was kind of like the little rascals do mm -hmm. Southwest history. Yes. But yeah, that was yeah, that was great. I think that was the one you're referring to. And they worked on that one all year. Oh, the oh teacher really? made them practice. They wrote the script the first. They did the research the first semester. Mm -hmm. Then they wrote the script the second semester. Mm -hmm. And then third semester they practiced with a drama coach and did it wow. like a play. And then the last semester they actually filmed it oh out gosh. in the desert. So. Oh my God. So that's yeah, incredible. so that's that's how far you could go with it. But mm -hmm. then you could also do it quick, like an extra credit product right. project. Mm -hmm. Yours was fun because you recruited your neighbors in Illinois. So tell me, what was that process like? Yeah, well, all my friends, when I asked them to just you know act and be themselves on camera, they were totally they were totally down for it. They were they were like, oh, I get to be on a screen, and they were so excited when I told them that it was going to be projected here too. They're like, oh, I'm going to be so famous. I'm like, oh, that's so cute. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it was it was. They really liked it, and uh, it was really fun for me also um, having to work or like getting able to work with so many other people on it, and mm -hmm. not just uh, having to do everything myself. That was a lift that was lifting off my shoulders. So yeah, yeah I liked that. 
Wow, and and they were in. You kind of had them in semi-historic costumes too, especially the baby Ruth guy. And then when they were they were cranking on a water pump. Where's that water pump? Is it in the middle of Cary, Illinois, or just yeah, that's historic? that's located right in the middle of downtown Cary. It's oh, right yeah. near the train station, and it's still there. Yeah. Unfortunately, there is no water coming out anymore. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, it's still nice to go and see. And it's in the middle of two benches, and you get to just like sit in between and talk, and then look at the water pump. Like wow. This place has some good history. It used to be rural, and that, that's what's funny. So yeah, Cary is like Burke in the sense that it used to be rural, and mm -hmm. then the city came out to meet it. So Chicago came out to meet Cary, just like D.C. has come out to touch Fairfax oh, and yeah. Alexandria and all that. So we end up being in the greater Washington, D.C. area. Yes. But back in the day, you know, Alexandria had its own reputation mm -hmm. and Definitely. all things. So that's cool. So uh, what are you planning on doing? Um, for college and and what do you want to study? Uh, well, I'm on a very thin line between history and English. Both subjects I love, but both subjects I believe um, are very la relatable to each other. And as I worked with the Girl Scouts um, and teaching them about this woman figure who rose up in a time of gender um, inequality and economic dis um, disarray. I believe that it's important in teaching the youngest members of our generation. And so that's what I'd like to do, something either helping children achieve better education so they can become the future leaders of our world um, or something with human rights, definitely. But I love history so much, and I want to keep that. And I think it's important that everybody should know their own history. That's exciting. So you keep keep spreading the word there. And and Mary, what are your future plans? Uh, I'm so young right now. <laughs> I have no idea what I want to do in college. I, I barely know what I want to do in high school. I mean, it's just so, it just seems well, you like just it's so far away. Yeah, right. I just graduated eighth. Yeah, I just graduated eighth grade, and uh, I do know where I'm going to high school. I'm going to Trinity Oaks Christian Academy. Mm -hmm. I've been there since first grade, wow. but I'm very committed to it, and uh, I just love it so much. Mm -hmm. But uh, I'm gonna try to start a few clubs there, like drama mm -hmm. club. I'm an actor and. Maybe I can start a choir. I like to sing. So and you yeah. cut you cut an album last summer. Or oh, tell us a little bit about yeah, that. Cool. Thanks. Yeah, it has eight songs. I did covers wow. of Christian songs they may hear on K Love. It's a mm -hmm. radio station. I'm not sure if you have it in this area, mm -hmm. but um, yeah, if you want to check it out, it's on iTunes. It's oh on my Spotify. Gosh, that's so cool. <laughs> Thank you. It's called Mars. So yeah, <laughs> with a Z. M-A-R-Z, yeah. Mars. So it's Mary. Mars. Mars. <laughs> so cool. Now, I think we have some video. Yes, we have some video of the red carpet experience so we can see some, you girls in glam. <laughs> Ooh, yes, so, please. So whenever they're ready to roll, we're ready. But we're going to see what it was like. So what was that like, seeing yourself? <laughs> wow. <laughs> it was really cool. I, Especially, um, Mary, you touched on the fact that we all got that type of recognition. Yeah. And I think that's really important, especially everyone put so much work into their videos. And that's I think that's the most important, that everybody got to be up there. And that was really cool. Yeah, the two kids you saw first on the red carpet mm -hmm. are from Annandale. Right. And they did a short documentary mm -hmm. on uh, Freed, which is a Washington, D.C. group that reenacts slavery stories. Yeah. And so, and what did you think when you saw that film? I you know you both saw that one. It's quite dramatic. Okay. So. Honestly, like, slavery makes me so angry, especially be based on a race. Mm -hmm. That is just disgusting. And mm -hmm. those actors were so good. They portrayed them, the character so well. Mm -hmm. And uh, some of them even sang. I'm like, yeah, wow, you guys were pretty yeah. great. Yeah. Yeah. And I just, it made me so mad. But at the same time, I'm glad that, 
there's no longer slavery in in the world. Like if that had continued, that would be so terrible. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. She was very intense. I, you could feel her pain when she spoke. Definitely. Mm -hmm. And that Definitely. was just a presentation that happened at the George Mason Re Regional Library right. in Annandale. Mm -hmm. But the guys were there and they caught it just on their cell phone camera, mm -hmm. and then they edited it up a little bit. So that's the kind of thing that that it doesn't have to be a fancy film, right. uh, but it told a story. It and it, and it captured the reenactors. Yeah. So, so we hope people will take their cell phones and also go to Gatsby's Tavern and go yes. to the go and go to uh, Fairfax Courthouse on June seventeenth mm -hmm. and take some film and wrap it up and get it going. Yeah. So um, and so and so the other one was you saw the two guys and then mm -hmm. there was Burke that did the, yeah. the little kids and and what did you think of the Burke film? It was very cute and they were again they were so young but they were so passionate they were so committed and they um, when they were give, talking about their film they went to some eight field trips throughout the year and that's a lot and they're little kids it's a lot to take in it's a lot of information yeah, but out of school exactly out of school, they do school. and they were everything exactly and yeah. they were just so focused on it and they were ready to go and they were so eager eager yeah. to learn and that's really just magical and then what about the Mosby thing so up in the Great Falls kids shot Mosby mm -hmm. and, and did the reenactment in that in the Aldi church, the church up in Aldi. What do you think about that? Claire I, Barton. I thought that was really cool. I had never heard of him before, uh -huh. and that was really interesting to learn about. Yeah, and they had a little music video about Clara Barton. Yeah, yeah that was so, so cute. Oh my yeah. gosh, they had like matching like motions and stuff. Oh Angels of the Battlefield. Yeah. So great. Yeah, so that so every I think every film was awesome. Mm, so. Definitely. So good. So you're going to come back next year, hopefully, yes. and those and the, and then once you graduate college, you're going to come back and help and teach. Definitely. And you're going to teach the Girl Scouts. Yes. And we're going to hear more music from Mary next time. Come back next year. Yes, definitely. Same if I can make it from Illinois. Oh, yeah. sure. <laughs> of course. Yeah. Okay. Well, thanks for coming, guys. And Thank you. Thank you so much. And, I hope you go on and teach others. Yes, thank right. you so much. Right. Thanks for being with us. Definitely. Yeah.